Greetings to you all. Today, I want to call each of you precious. And I want you to remember that your medallion is your heart. At some time along the way, or many times along the way, we need to search for our heart. That seems strange, doesn't it? Because it's right there. But we need to search for it because we can lose track of what is in our heart in order to be reminded of our value, especially our value to God. One of the things that the Lost Medallion movie shares is that it takes courage to live out our purpose and serve others. That's the topic today, serving others. The character Huko in the movie cut up a pineapple and he wanted to know what to do with it. The response he was given was, a true king will find the courage to serve others. The one king I know of who truly served others was Jesus. Most of the time when we see a king in a story or on TV, we notice that the king is being served by others. Many kings have servants, but Jesus was a different kind of king. The one thing I remember that Jesus did that was such a surprise to me the first time I really read it and understood it was that before he shared a meal with his friends one time, he washed their feet. And he did this because during those days they walked everywhere and their feet got dirty and they got tired. The kind of king that sometimes we think about today would probably not have to walk everywhere. But if he did, he would have had servants, or would have today, servants to wash his feet. But Jesus, Jesus showed his love for others by serving them. This story we can find in the Bible, in the book of John, the 13th chapter. There's also a couple verses in the Bible that say more about how we can serve. I'm going to read from the book of 1 Peter, chapter number four, verses 10 and 11. Listen. Serve each other according to the gift each person has received as good managers of God's diverse gifts. Whoever speaks should do so as those who speak God's word. Whoever serves should do so from the strength that God furnishes. Do this so that in everything, God may be honored through Jesus Christ. These verses are telling us that we should use the gifts we have to serve others. We have talked about gifts before. But there is much more to say. God wants us to discover what we can do because we were created to do it. And then God wants us to practice it and use it for others. What we are able to do through practice because of what God has done for us is our gift or gifts. And our spiritual gifts are recognized in us when we believe the Holy Spirit is at work in us. The Holy Spirit is what makes a gift different from a talent. It is wonderful, though, what happens when our talents work together with our gifts for God's purpose. The Bible also names some of the gifts God has given to believers. There are some listed in the book of 1 Corinthians in the 12th chapter. I want to share five of those gifts. And so look what we did. We put them in gift boxes to remind us that they truly are gifts given to us. Gifts that we didn't ask for that makes them a little bit different than perhaps a birthday present. But they are gifts because they are ours. Let's see what's in this one. Some people have been given the gift of healing. I 
wonder if you know anyone who has the gift of healing. Maybe someone you know who is a doctor or a nurse or someone who knows how to heal people's hearts and make them feel better. Let's see what other gifts there might be. I like this one. Purple's my favorite. This is the gift that God gave to me. I know this because I have had a chance to actually learn what my spiritual gifts are. The gift of faith. Hmm. Being able to know and understand how God works in our lives and that God is working all the time is to have faith. I wonder what else there is. Let's look at this one. This is shiny. Oh, this one. This one is my husband's gift. The gift of knowledge. I wonder if you know anyone with the gift of knowledge. Think about your teachers in school. You might even have the gift of knowledge. You might have these other two gifts as well. We'll put this one down here. This one is smaller. Oh, I'll bet some of you have this. I actually know some of you have this. The gift of helping. That is actually listed in the Bible as an important gift. I'll bet you help your parents. I'll bet you help your siblings. I'll bet you've helped people you don't even know that you've helped. Helping is a wonderful gift to have. There is one more that I chose from the whole list. Oh, here's a good one. This is a good one for someone with the gift of knowledge because sometimes these go together. Knowledge and teaching. This is a great gift. This is a gift that I have also. Many of us have more than one. We can mix them together and do amazing things for God especially if we put them with our talents. If you have a talent for playing hockey, you could probably teach someone how to play hockey. Even when we use our gifts, serving can be a challenge. Think of a time when you were helped by someone who was using a talent or a gift to help you. And then if you saw the movie, I wonder if you can recall who used their talents in the movie to help someone else? We're going to stop the video and I want you to go and get some kind of fruit. Maybe a banana or an orange. Those are two really good ones. When you get back, if it's an orange, you need to peel it. If it's a banana, you'll need to cut it into pieces after you peel it. Your orange comes apart in pieces so you won't have to cut it. Once you've done that, count how many pieces you have. Just like hookah in the movie, see how many you have and think about someone you can serve for each one of those pieces. Make a list of the people you can serve. Take the time you need. I'll see you soon. I chose an orange and I peeled my orange and I sectioned it and I counted 11 sections to my orange. So here are the things I would like to do to serve using my gifts and my talents. One of those things I'd like to do to serve is I'd like to serve my family. I'd like to be able to do things for my family. I know I do things already, things like cooking and taking care of things in the house and taking care of family members when they need things. But there might be other ways I can serve that I don't think about. 
If I think harder about how I might serve my family, that would be wonderful. Another thing I'd like to do is to serve my neighbors. I like to cook and I like to do things that involve cooking. And so if someone ever has a need, it might be wonderful for me to serve them by taking them a meal. If their lives are busy or they've had some challenges, it would be wonderful to serve someone with a new baby. What a great way to serve by cooking a meal. The other thing I'd like to do is to serve my friends. I have wonderful friends and I notice how my friends serve me. So I'd like to be able to serve them back. Another thing I'd like to do is serve my community. And I have done that before. I have served with groups that have made many wonderful things possible, like feeding children in the schools who don't always have enough to eat so that they can have food on the weekend when it's harder to get food because they're not at school where that food can be served to them. Another group I'd like to serve is the people I meet. Sometimes it's interesting when you're out doing things and you run across people and you see that they have a need. And so there's a way that sometimes we can serve them. I had a gift card one time that was from Bob Evans restaurant. And it was given to me as a gift and I had used part of the value of that gift card. But I saw someone one day as I was out in the community, I was actually on my way downtown and I saw someone sitting with a sign that said they were hungry. And so I gave them my gift card so that maybe they could get something to eat, something that they might choose. Because sometimes when you don't have food and people want to offer to help you, they give you food and you get, don't get to make the choice. So it was nice for someone to be able to have a choice. Another group I might like to help is the larger needs of the whole world. You know, the world has many, many needs, and in our church, we can find out what many of those needs are. We have ways in our church that we can give our offerings to groups that have needs all over the world, places in Africa where wells need to be drilled so water can be clean and safe. I've even participated with groups of children who have had fundraisers to do such a thing, like giving fresh water to places where water is needed. Another thing that I can do to serve is to take care of myself. That's a really important thing to do. Caring for yourself enables you to serve other people. And my favorite people to serve are children. So I want to take care of myself so I can serve all of you in the best way possible. You know, in the movie, The Lost Medallion, Billy and Allie realized their value to God, and they found out that what was most precious or special was not the medallion, but their hearts, and what they had in their hearts to give to other people. I want you to have a personal medallion that will remind you of your value to God. You can make your medallion with some materials that you can probably find around your house. I made a medallion. You can see, here is my medallion. I'd like to tell you about what I used for my medallion and how you can use some of the same materials, maybe a little bit different. I took a jar lid. This is one of those canning jar lids. So it actually had two parts, the flat lid and then the rim. And what I did was I used glue to glue the flat lid to the rim after I covered it with tin foil. So you'll want to cover it to make it look shiny. Medallions are kind of precious, so you can make it look shiny with tin foil. And before you glue it all down, take a nail and a hammer and somewhere near the edge, not too far to the edge, you can have someone help you, your dad or your mom, Use the hammer to pound the nail through so you have a place to hang some yarn or some string. I have a thin yarn that I used once I put that all together. And on the back, when you've put tinfoil on something, you have all those rough edges. So I just took a piece 
of cardboard or construction paper and I glued that there to cover it up and finish it and make it look nice. Then I cut out a heart and on the heart, and notice I put it in the center because we are so important to God that we are center in God's heart. So I put my heart right in the middle with my name on it. You'll put your name on it. And I put it on something sparkly. It's just some sparkly ribbon, two pieces of ribbon that I put together with some glue and put underneath the heart. Then on some pieces of paper as well, I put down on that little piece of paper, each one, my gifts. I put faith, I put teaching, I put creativity as my talent because I do like to be creative. And when the Holy Spirit works in me and I use my gift of teaching and my gift of faith, I can really have fun being creative. I hope you have some fun making your medallion. You can wear it if you want to. You can wear it anywhere you'd like, or you can just hang it up on your wall. And remember that you are precious to God and you have things to do for God. The important things that we have looked at this month for the last three weeks are this. We were designed by God. We were designed for a purpose. And that purpose is to serve God by serving others using our unique talents and gifts. And we are to do this because the Bible tells us that we are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart and our soul and our mind. And we are to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. That is the purpose according to Matthew chapter 22, verses 27 to 39. Someday you might lose this medallion that you've made might get caught up in the stuff in your bedroom. But if you remember you are precious to God, you will not lose your heart. The most important medallion that you have. And if you are ever struggling and thinking like Allie in the movie, in the movie that you don't matter, go looking for your heart not things. Billy and Allie found their joy in finding what was in their heart, not in the lost medallion. Let's sing a song together and let's pause the video so you can go get something to keep the beat. Maybe you have a drum at home, maybe you have tambourine or some shakers. If you don't have any of those, you probably have a pot and a wooden spoon. So go and find something to help you keep the beat, and I'll be here when you get back. I hope you got what you need to help you keep the beat. We're going to sing the song, the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. The words will be on the screen. You can follow along. Here we go. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in where? Down in my heart. I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Now that we have the joy down in our hearts, we can pray together. You can follow along with this prayer. On the screen is your line. I will speak and then when I pause, 
you say the line you see on the screen, which reads, we shout our joyful praise to you. So when you hear the pause, you say those words. Let's pray. Lord, you are the master creator and we are your precious creation. You are the loving presence in us and we are your love in the world. You are the love in our hearts and we have a heart of joy. And all God's kids said, Amen. And now let's bless one another. You know what to do. God loves you. God is with you. God blesses you. Have a great week.